Michael Saylor. 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 From selling a domain for $30 million to losing $6 billion in a day, the founder of MicroStrategy, author of the Mobile Wave best selling book, and the Bitcoin Godfather. This is Michael Saylor. Thank you. On a freezing winter day, Michael Saylor was born in Lincoln, Nebraska. He was the son of a military father and a musical mother who gave him a taste for adventure and creativity. His father, an Air Force veteran, moved the family from one base to another, exposing Saylor to diverse cultures and experiences. His mother, the daughter of a country musician, nurtured his artistic side and encouraged his curiosity. Sailor's childhood was a journey across the globe, until they finally settled in Dayton, Ohio, at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, the birthplace of aviation. There, Sailor excelled in his studies and graduated top of his high school class. He had a passion for flying and dreamed of becoming a fighter pilot. He was determined to reach for the stars. 1987 the story takes us to the prestigious Massachusetts Institute of Technology, where he earned a full Air Force scholarship. There, he studied aeronautics and astronautics, as well as science, technology, and society. He also met his future microstrategy partner, Sanju K. Bansal, a fellow frat brother. They shared a vision of using technology to transform the world. But fate had other plans for Sailor. A medical condition prevented him from pursuing his dream of flying. He had to find a new path. He landed a job as a consultant at DuPont, a big chemical company, where he created simulation software to help them optimize their budget. He soon realized that he had a knack for solving complex problems with data and software. He also realized that he wanted more than just a job. After 18 months of working for DuPont, Sailor decided to take a leap of faith. He quit his job and founded his own company with DuPont as his first client. He named it MicroStrategy, a name that reflected his vision of using microcomputers to create smart strategies. How did MicroStrategy change the course of Sailor's life? But the most important question is, what exactly is MicroStrategy? Michael Saylor is president and CEO of MicroStrategy. He founded the startup in 1989 at the age of 24. 1989, Saylor started to build his own company with his MIT fraternity brother, Sanju Bansal. They had a vision. They wanted to create software that could help businesses make better decisions based on data. They had $250,000 from DuPont, where Saylor had worked as a consultant, creating computer simulations for the chemical giant. They used the money to launch MicroStrategy, a name that reflected their vision of using microcomputers to create smart strategies. They had a goal, to create business intelligence software that was like having a super smart assistant for companies. Imagine software that could gather tons of information and turn it into smart strategies to solve tricky problems. Software that could help you avoid traffic jams, optimize your inventory, or increase your sales. That was the dream of MicroStrategy, and they made it happen. They developed a new approach to business intelligence called Relational Online Analytical Processing, which allowed them to analyze large and complex data sets. They also leveraged the power of graphical operating systems and client-server computing, which enabled them to deliver intelligence everywhere. Late 1990s, the dot-com boom was in full swing and MicroStrategy was riding the wave. They were one of the most valuable companies on Wall Street they were running Super Bowl ads and landing contracts with giant corporations like McDonald's. 1992, MicroStrategy secures a lucrative $10 million contract with McDonald's to provide analytics for the effectiveness of its promotions. And that was just the beginning. Whole Foods, Adidas, and Visa all wanted a piece of Sailor's magic. Michael Sailor, living the high life, renting out football fields, throwing epic parties for celebs. He was the king of Washington, D.C., with a net worth of $7 billion. He was a star in the software world.
He won the Software Entrepreneur of the Year Award in 1997 and made Red Herring Magazine's list of top 10 entrepreneurs for 1998. MIT Technology Review even praised him as an innovator under 35. In 1996, Saylor shared his vision with the Washington Post, saying, Nobody has really grasped yet the great wealth that can be made selling data over the web. There are 100 million potential customers out there. 1998. Sailor takes MicroStrategy public, making it a household name in enterprise analytics and mobility software. Sailor's passion for data-driven decisions becomes a trademark, driving MicroStrategy's growth and success. But this success was also a trap setting him up for a fall he never saw coming. March 2000, MicroStrategy is on fire, with shares soaring to $3,300 from just $12. But then, a bomb drops. The Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, sends a letter accusing them of cooking the books with their revenue numbers. In one day, Michael Saylor's fortune takes a massive hit, plunging by a staggering $6 billion. And in just five days, MicroStrategy's stock crashes by a whopping 80%. Michael Saylor is here on a single day in March of 2000. His personal net worth dropped by $6 billion. That was due to an SEC case brought against his company, MicroStrategy. But man and company survived and thrived once again. MicroStrategy specializes in business intelligence, helping other companies analyze data and make decisions. His first book is called The Mobile Wave, How Mobile Intelligence Will Change Everything. I am pleased to have Michael Saylor back at this table. Welcome. December 2000. Saylor faces the consequences of the SEC ordeal settling without admitting guilt, the cost, the $350,000 fine, and a personal disgorgement payment of over $8 million. A financial blow, but nothing compared to the 98% drop in their stock from its peak. For many companies in the dot-com bubble, this was the end of the road, billions of dollars gone, profitability unreachable. Despite the setbacks and rumors of a wild lifestyle, Saylor remained firm at the helm of MicroStrategy. He steered the company through turbulent times, all while enjoying the sun in places like Florida and street tropes. Amazingly, he kept the ship afloat, even though the company's share price barely moved in the years after the SEC investigation. Losing $6 billion, a record in history, and that's what happened to Michael Saylor. The dot-com bubble burst, and MicroStrategy's stocks plummeted. On top of that, the company had to admit two years of losses in its financial reports. Saylor, trying to act cool, says, the loss feels like nothing, actually. But behind the scenes, his colleagues said that he was in shock. Hundreds lost their jobs, and MicroStrategy shares suffered. But Saylor continued to leave the company for years. A former executive even said, the company should not have survived. It should have died. Yet. Against all odds, MicroStrategy persisted under Michael Saylor's leadership. While MicroStrategy may not be a household name, it endured. Over the next two decades, they created new products, attracted new enterprise clients, and quietly grew at a steady pace. All because Michael Saylor saw a new era of smart thinking coming, something we all take for granted now. 2008. Saylor started the Saylor Academy in his spare time. It's a nonprofit that offers free online courses to anyone who wants to learn. Over the years, it partnered with schools, offering almost 100 courses. Starting as Sailor's personal website in 1999, it transformed into the Sailor Foundation's free education program, reaching over a million students. Michael Sailor always keeps an eye on tech changes and how they affect our lives. He shares his thoughts on where science and tech are heading in his book. 2012, he wrote a bestseller called The Mobile Wave, how mobile intelligence will change everything. It talks about how mobile, cloud, and social networks, along with big tech companies like Apple, Amazon, Facebook, and Google, are changing the game. 
An Apple computer was like worth three billion 12 years ago, and then went to 600 billion. If you ask me, Apple computer is going to $2,000 a share, right? I mean, I'd be very, very long in that company. Whoever's selling that stock must be a moron. Saylor even predicts that money and payment systems will see big changes. This forward thinking not only kept MicroStrategy on track, but also helped it stay ahead of the competition. Saylor's commitment to evolving the company kept it ahead. In 2019, MicroStrategy rocked the financial scene, pulling in a cool $486 million in revenue and boasting a $2.4 billion market cap. Fast forward to today, and its share price has skyrocketed to around $330 up from $144 at the beginning of 2020. Now that we've peeked into Michael's world and his company, let's find out why he became a big fan of Bitcoin. At first, he wasn't into it, but after learning more, he became one of its biggest supporters. How did a software company end up investing $1 billion into Bitcoin? That's the question that baffled many people when they learned about MicroStrategy's daring move. But the answer is not so simple. Michael Saylor has always been a visionary, foreseeing the trends and opportunities that shape the world. He is also a man who has faced many obstacles and risks, but never gave up on his vision. The crisis is the COVID-19 pandemic, which shattered the global economy and exposed the weakness of the fiat currency system. Saylor saw the peril of holding cash in a time of inflation and uncertainty. He also saw the promise of Bitcoin, a digital asset that is scarce, decentralized, and secure. He decided to convert his company's cash reserves into Bitcoin, betting on its future as the global store of value asset. The shift is the dawn of a new paradigm, where crypto is not just a niche phenomenon, but a mainstream reality. Saylor is not alone in his belief in Bitcoin. He was joined by millions of people and organizations who acknowledge its value and potential. MicroStrategy is not just a software company. It is a pioneer and a leader in the crypto space. But how did it all begin? How did Saylor go from being a software engineer to being a crypto evangelist? No one from MicroStrategy recalls their boss ever talking about Bitcoin except for a tweet from 2013 where Saylor said, Bitcoin days are numbered. It seems like just a matter of time before it suffers the same fate as online gambling. To understand Michael during that period, we must first understand Bitcoin, or even a little about it, because it needs a video of its own. If you want a video of Bitcoin, like this video. July 2020, the economic world was in turmoil and Michael Saylor decided to switch things up for MicroStrategy. Instead of keeping regular cash, he wanted to try something different. After doing some research, he discovered that Bitcoin's price had been rising by 100% every year for the past 10 years, proving its potential as an asset that could store and move value independently. The very next month, MicroStrategy shook the financial scene by announcing stock buyback plans and a whopping $250 million investment in Bitcoin. The company acquired 21,454 Bitcoins. Not stopping there, in September, Saylor doubled down, revealing plans to purchase an additional $175 million worth of Bitcoin. Why he decided to invest in Bitcoin and how it saved his company from dying. In the second quarter of 2020, no one thought Bitcoin was a good investment for big institutions. From Michael's perspective, even though Amazon stock had doubled in that quarter, Bitcoin was still cheap and stable. Bitcoin went up and down between 10,000 and 4,000, but it didn't change much. He looked at Bitcoin and he saw a digital network that was more valuable than money because money was losing trust and power. Bitcoin was not controlled by any government or central bank and it was open and decentralized. He had to take a risk and buy Bitcoin, or he had to sell this company. He thought it was a reasonable risk because Bitcoin looked like the Facebook or Google of money in 2010 or 2011, when most people didn't understand them. He had the experience of riding the mobile wave, and he was the guy who bought Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and Google stock in 2011, and they all worked out well. 
He tells a funny story in his book, The Mobile Wave, about his niece who wanted an iPad for her birthday, and he realized that meant the whole world wanted it. He bought Apple stock because of that. He says in 2020 he talked to the same niece, and she said she bought some Amazon stock. Amazon was trading at $3,300 a share, and it had just doubled. That meant that everyone knew that Amazon, Apple, and Google were good investments. This was not a new technology trend anymore. He said every Uber driver knew that. He decided to get off the mobile wave and get on a crypto wave and think that through. MicroStrategy went big, spending a colossal $3.8 billion to grab 125,051 bitcoins. They got them at an average price of $30,200, making a splash in the world of Bitcoin with control over 0.5% of its total supply. That's a huge deal. Now, Michael Saylor, who owns 75% of MicroStrategy, wants to clear things up. He's not turning MicroStrategy into a Bitcoin investment company or anything like that. Saylor changed his Twitter picture to have those famous laser eyes, a sign that someone is all in on Bitcoin. He started sharing statuses supporting Bitcoin, like calling it money that isn't broken behind a wall of encrypted energy. Plus, he's throwing in famous quotes with the hashtag Bitcoin. October 2020, Michael Saylor shared some big news. He's holding on to a hefty 17,732 Bitcoins snagged at an average of $9,882 each. Here's the kicker. He hasn't sold a single Bitcoin. Sailor's Bitcoin bet turned out to be a jackpot. Just six months after announcing his crypto venture, MicroStrategy stocks skyrocketed by a whopping 971%, soaring from $135 to an impressive $1,312. The surge in Bitcoin prices added another $2.3 billion to Sailor's pocket, earning him a spot among the crypto tycoons on Forbes' 2021 billionaires list. The cool part, Sailor isn't all about chasing billions just for the money. He's on a mission to change the world, giving everyone a chance to boost their knowledge. September 2020, Sailor threw in another $200 million. That's when the dominoes started to fall. Over the next few months, Michael Saylor became the game changer, shifting the narrative from why would I buy Bitcoin to why haven't I bought Bitcoin. His influence was everywhere. Podcasts, mainstream media, CEO events with thousands in attendance, and educational material creation for his nonprofit. Saylor keeps urging people to buy Bitcoin through tweets like, Bitcoin is like oxygen. Get Bitcoin when you can not when you have to. Bitcoin means freedom. Bitcoin is unstoppable tech. Don't wait until you lose most of your money to buy Bitcoin. Inflation is the problem, and Bitcoin fixes it. He reassured them not to worry about Bitcoin's price fluctuations, highlighting the lasting benefits it offers. Despite Bitcoin's drop from its all-time high in November 2021, around $68,000, Saylor unveiled MicroStrategy's plan to hold Bitcoin for the next 100 years without selling. He praised Bitcoin as the world's best collateral, envisioning its market value reaching $100 trillion someday. MicroStrategy is looking for ways to profit from its massive Bitcoin holdings. I, I, you know, I, I had a guy come to my house. Uh, I met his son and the next day, the son brought his father and his father could like, by the entire city of Miami. And, uh, and he said, well, I don't, I don't know what's going on, but I know Bitcoin is really important. And my son says, I got to sit down and listen. And so I orange pilled him for two hours. And uh, I'm not going to say who, because it's, it's such a common story. But, I, but my point here is, every one of you knows someone. Go tell a CEO, go tell your father, go tell your mother. Go tell somebody that Bitcoin's going to change the world and they should figure out more about it because the number one thing you can do is educate the world on Bitcoin 
and let people know they need to figure out Bitcoin. And every one of you does make a difference because I would never get those meetings if it wasn't like some, someone that went and said, you got to pay attention. And my last point to you, you do not sell your Bitcoin. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. August 2020. Since MicroStrategy's public Bitcoin investment, giants like Tesla, PayPal, MasterCard, Square, MassMutual, VNY Mellon, and others have followed suit. Even renowned investor Stanley Druckenmiller, who initially hesitated, and billionaire Bill Miller, a Wall Street wolf, decided to invest 50% of his fortune in Bitcoin. The Bitcoin revolution is accelerating and Michael Saylor is leading the way. After over three decades at the helm, Saylor shocked everyone by resigning and leaving MicroStrategy in 2022. His new mission, to plunge headfirst into Bitcoin acquisition strategy and advocacy initiatives. November 2023, Saylor made a daring move, investing $593.3 million in Bitcoin, averaging around $36,785 per coin. This purchase propelled MicroStrategy, MSTR, to the top, now holding 174,530 bitcoins, with an average cost of about $30,252 per coin. To fund this, MicroStrategy partnered with Cowan and Company, Canaccord Genuity, and BTIG to potentially offer up to $750 million worth of Class A common stock. Sailor's journey in the crypto world continues to transform the landscape of corporate investments. Michael Saylor's journey teaches us a simple yet powerful lesson. Always be open to new ideas. It doesn't matter how old you are or what your past looks like. There's no excuse not to explore what interests you and contributes to the betterment of humanity. While the vast amount of information available might feel overwhelming, it also means we all have the unique ability to learn, influence, and make a difference. If you have been watching so far, thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed watching our first documentary. We need to hear your feedback in the comments section. That's all for today's video. Until next time, peace.